Today we pay tribute to the once great PowerPC era by building the best G5 quad in the world. Doogie style. In the not-too-distant past, before Intel and AMD and their x86 architecture completely swallowed the market, Apple had a partnership with IBM and their PowerPC. Apple bridged a gap in the market for enthusiasts and professionals that didn't want to break the bank for a Silicon Graphics, HP PA RISC, Sun, or other workstation. The PowerPC processor provided something different, something different enough to power Apple machines all the way through the 90s and into the new millennium at which point it finally was abandoned in favor of the x86. Though I don't blame them. The very last Apple to carry the mighty power PC was the G5. And in the case of the G5 Quad, a pair of dual-core PowerPC 970 MP CPUs. Sure, you can get an IBM Power Workstation, but it doesn't package it in this kind of beauty. A beauty that, to my knowledge, no individual has ever chosen to accentuate in such great detail. Most of these systems are gutted and x86 hardware thrown in later, and I've seen some amazing machines come out of that. This, however, is to remind us of the close of an era. Not just for Apple, but for when engineering processors with different features and architectures was important in developing technology to the point it has reached today. It now hosts DoogieLabs.com and acts as a central backbone in allowing me to have access to data from anywhere I may end up. Standard NAS storage solutions are not acceptable here. It may be a waste of power, but at least it's a far cry from the 1.6 kilowatts continuous the old server drew for electricity, so at least an order of magnitude step in the right direction. All right, I'll spare no more time. Let's look at the finished product, and then we'll cover how this bad mamba jamba came to fruition. Now the G5 Power Macintosh came in several flavors. Originally using single core processors, PCI X and DDR1 RAM. The late 2005 machines are the ones to really go after as they were the final revision with most of the bug fixes. These newer models sported modern PCI Express and recently obsolete DDR2. Okay, it's been obsolete for a while now, but whatever. With potential bottlenecks removed in the system bus, I was able to plan out a fantastically speedy Linux server and workstation of the non-x86 flavor. I started out with RAM and maxed it out at 16 gigs using eight two gig DDR2 sticks. People will tell you that the machine will see more RAM, but don't be fooled as the memory controllers will only ever make use of 16 gigs of it. ECC is optional and PC4200 is the minimum. Each physical processor spews binary nonsense via a 64-bit DDR bi-directional frontside bus, so there's actually two of those on this machine since there's two physical processors. Could be better, but I won't complain. This bus is half the CPU clock speed, so in my case that's 1.25 GHz. PCI Express is not even the 2.0 specification, and you get 1 by 16, 1 by 8, and 2 by 4 slots. I originally intended to stuff this with a 7800 GT, which I received broken, and the eBay seller was able to avoid the return since it was far past the time frame to return it. This system isn't finished because the NVIDIA Quadro card required to complete the build hasn't arrived yet, so I've decided to slot up the 6600 GT until after I'm back from being out on business. Storage is where this system really starts to shine. I was rather unimpressed with the 1.5 gig SATA that the system came with originally, so I was able to find a Sonnet Tempo SSD card which supported 6 gig SATA, and slotted in a pair of new Samsung 840 Pro 128 gig SSDs. These were extremely early firmware revisions, and were right for the price. These form a RAID 1 with mind-boggling speeds this machine has never seen. Debian Linux is the operating system of choice. I use this system as a server and Linux box. OS X isn't going to cut the mustard here. It's not supported on PowerPC anymore, but Debian hasn't abandoned it yet, and hopefully will continue to support it for at least a few more years. The main hard drive cage contains two 2TB hard drives, and they are in a RAID 1. 
This provides a large storage area for backups and other data. I have plans to add a SCSI card so I can continue to use my tape drive from the old system, as well as a, maybe a fiber channel card so I can use my disk drive array. Booting from the SSD card directly is not supported, but I used a parallel ATA flash solid state disk on the parallel ATA bus with the optical drive to provide a viable boot path and Linux kernel. Once the kernel drivers are loaded for the SSD card, this system flies. The anodizing on the outside of the case was sanded off, and then the case was mostly hand polished. Only one of the many steps was done using equipment. Bright metallic sapphire paint was used on the interior panels and trim rings around the ports. Power stability is provided via a Lieber Upstation GXT2 2KVA UPS. This system seems to average around 400 watts usage and the pure sine wave ups provides up to 30 minutes of clean backup power. Let's face it, this machine will easily be blown away by something inexpensive by today's standards, but the pride taken in craftsmanship will certainly be absent when compared to this. This machine has done its work time and now it can be enjoyed.